Hello everyone, it's Nick here with Nick Tolman Music, and welcome to the continuation of our beginner guitar lessons series using Mel Bay's Modern Guitar Method. If you haven't already checked out my first five lessons, please check those out. They're going to cover basics like tuning the guitar, the different kinds of notes, the staff, all of those kind of fundamental things that you need to know uh, to get started using this book. For today's lesson, we're going to look at page seven, which is going to teach us the first three notes that we will learn on the guitar. This page is going to focus solely on the first string, which is E. We call this our high E string because we have two E strings, right? We have a high and we have a low. Right? This is referring to the pitch of the note. Some people get confused. They want to call this the high E string because it's physically higher up than this string, but that's not the case. This is your high E string because it is the higher pitch of the two E's. That's where we're going to focus today. That's our first string. The first three notes that we're going to learn are E, F, and G. As you're looking at the book, it's going to give you exactly what you need to know to be able to play these notes. It's going to show you where they're at on the staff, but it's also going to show you where they're at on the neck and on the fretboard. I'm going to help walk you through those today as well, so it should be no problem. So the first note is E, which is open. Open means that we are not going to use any fingers on our left hand. We're just going to pluck the strings. So we're going to pluck an open E. That note is E. It is found on the top space of the staff. And you can see that there right at the top of the page. The top space. It's not on a line. It's on the space. Okay, so that is E. Whenever you see a note in that spot, it will always be this note. E. The next note is F. So for F, we're going to use our first finger. We're going to place it on the first fret, and then we're also, and then we're going to go ahead and pick that same string again. That is F. Now it's important to note when you play any note on a fret that finger placement is important. You want to be as close to the actual fret as possible. This first silver thing right here is the first fret, right? We talked about it in previous lesson, but this is the nut. You want to be as close to the fret as possible. The further you get back, the more potential you have for a buzzing note. I'll show you. So if my finger is really far back, I might get a sound like this. The closer I get to the fret, the more likely I'm going to have a clean tone. Which is what I want. Now, uh, you'll see that that note, F, is found on the top line of the staff. Top line of the staff. The next note that we're going to learn, or the last note that we're going to learn in this lesson, is G. For G, we're going to use our third finger, or our ring finger, one, two, three, third finger is going to be on the third fret of the E string. Okay, third finger, third fret, and again we're trying to keep that finger as close to that third fret as possible. And that is G. Our three notes that we have learned are E, F, and G. So let's go ahead and dive into this first exercise. So the first exercise is going to be using whole notes. If you haven't already watched my previous video on the different types of notes, please do. But a whole note is going to receive four counts or four beats. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and set my metronome to a nice slow tempo. I've got it set at 72. This is a great place to start for most of these exercises and you can work your way up. I always encourage my students to work their way to faster tempos as they go, but this is a good place to start. 
Now, so as we play these notes, we're only going to be using E, F, and G. They're all whole notes. So every note that we play on this exercise is going to get four beats or four counts to the metronome. The other thing that we need to keep in mind is the picking. So you'll see right above the very first note is the symbol. I'll put it right up on the screen here. But it is a down pick symbol, right? So whenever you see this symbol above a note, that means that you're going to pick downwards, right? As opposed to an upward pick symbol, which I'll also show you, which we will get to later. Right now in the book, we're only going to focus on picking downwards. So all the notes I'm going to pick down. Here we go. Here is the first exercise using whole notes and down picks. Here we go. Two, three, and two, three, four. That's the first exercise. Now generally, I'll encourage students to uh, kind of work their way up to about maybe 120, right? So taking it just a few clicks at a time, slowly working your way up and trying to play it at a tempo more like this. So there's our first exercise. A couple things to look out for. First off, we don't want dead space between notes, okay? So that can be a problem sometimes. Sometimes we get this. Right? So as you're playing, try as much as you can to keep the notes connected. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Keep the notes connected. Another thing that we need to watch out for, again, is our finger placement. We mentioned it before, but if you're getting dead sounds, you go to play a note and it's like, not ringing like it should. There's really one of two things that could be happening. One is your actual finger placement is bad, so you're too far back on the fret and you're getting buzzy sound. The other thing is you might just not be pressing down hard enough on the fret to get a good sound. So if I'm just barely pushing down, I'm going to get a dead sound. I need to make sure I'm pushing down all the way. Watch out for that. Make sure you're getting a good solid sound on every note. The other thing that I like to teach, and this, you know, some guitar teachers kind of might say differently, and actually the book shows you differently. The book shows you like when you play F, you've got your first finger, and then when you play G, you've got your third finger but on the fret, but all your other fingers are kind of flying up here in the air. I tend to like to leave my other fingers down on the fretboard. So like when I go from F with my first finger there to play G, I just drop my fingers down. So my third finger is there, but I leave all my fingers on the fretboard. Getting in this habit early allows for a lot more uh, fluidity and able to play things faster, easier down the road. So if you can get in the habit early on, I would highly encourage it. So whenever you're playing a G, you're just going to go ahead and leave all three fingers down. One, two, three. F, G. F, G. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next exercise. All of those same fundamentals are going to apply. We're going to set my metronome back to 72. And this time we're going to play half notes. So again, refer back to my other video that talks about the difference between notes, but half notes are going to get two counts to the metronome. Here we go. Here's the exercise. One, two, ready, play. Rest, rest. 
All right, good. So a couple things there. First off, we're still using down picks, so just keep using the down picks, but things to watch out for on this one. First off, you're not just going straight up and down the notes like on that first exercise. You're not going E, F, G. You're kind of jumping around a little bit, right? You're moving from E to G and then down to F. It's going to start kind of jumping around just a little bit. Watch out for those things. Same fundamentals as before. Make sure that the notes are connected. Make sure you're getting a good sound. The other thing is watch out on that last measure. There's a rest there, right? There's a half rest. The half rest is going to get two counts of rest. Always play the rests. Make sure that you're not just like skipping over them. They're part of the music, okay? So early on, get in the habit of counting those rests. All right, so I'm going to jump this up to 120. Play it for you one more time. Here we go. Here's exercise number two on page seven. Exercise two. All right, let's move on to exercise number three. For exercise number three, we're going to go ahead and be looking at quarter notes. Quarter notes are going to get one beat for every uh, click on the metronome. They're going to be right with the beat. Okay. We're still using down picks, and uh, here we go. So I've got my metronome set to 72. So you may find that on this particular exercise, this might be the point where you're like, oh wow, I can't quite play that. That's totally okay. If you're in that situation, don't be afraid to slow your metronome down. Okay, so we're actually going to slow it down. I've got it down to 60. I'm going to try it again. Here we go. One, two, ready, play. Already that was quite a bit easier, okay? So if you need to slow it down even more, please do. The best way to get these exercises is to start slow and slowly work your way up. It's better to play things perfectly and really slowly than to play them kind of uh, halfway at a faster tempo, right? So let's go ahead and jump this up to 120, show you what it would sound like at a built up tempo. There we go. Thanks for tuning in to our lesson here today. Uh, please stay with us for our next one. Thanks.